Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to create a design using this globe shaped bowl, almost like a bulb in its appearance. At the moment it's a sage green but originally it was white and it got very dirty, um, very unkempt looking so I've just given it a light coating of sage green spray paint and it matches beautifully with my monicella which is going to be part of the flower material that I'm going to use today to create a design. Now the base is visually quite heavy, it's a round shape, it attracts your eye so that means we can go quite tall with our arrangement to enable the flowers to be the more dominant part of the design. So those basic principles and rules of flower arranging are going to apply quite nicely with this arrangement um, and it's going to allow me to go at least one and a half to twice the size of the container. Now I'm hoping we're going to be able to get that into the camera shot. Um, the camera is quite far away to enable me to make a good tall arrangement. And I've used a half a block of floral foam attached to my plastic container which is sitting quite comfortably on the top of my glass vase. And my plan, the picture I've got in my mind is to make a design that's a little bit asymmetric um, although it might develop into something slightly different as I'm working along. So to start with, I'm off centre with my first placements and I'm going quite tall with these wonderful Molly Chella or the Bells of Ireland. Um, it's quite a soft stem, it's a hollow stem, soft and hollow. So you have to be quite mindful when arranging with them because they will snap and bend quite easily. They grow towards the light which is the reason I have all these interesting shapes and it's part of the mint family so it does also have quite an interesting sweet perfume to it, one that I quite find quite attractive. And the Marlachella is a bract so right in the centre is a very small white flower and that is surrounded by a modified leaf. And what I've done is I've created almost a vertical placement with three really interesting shapes there moving in different directions. I've got one to the back so it will give me some depth and it will give me some actual weight towards the back, which is always important when you're arranging in a raised container because we want the design to be stable when it's finished. So it gives you a chance for your eye to move to the back of the design and then we've got these lovely tall placements with the Molly Chella in the middle. Now one thing you do have to be mindful of if you're arranging with the Molly Chella is that they will move towards the light. So wherever your light source is will create more movement with your flowers. So they're not a flower that you can use in a horizontal position because the ends will turn up towards the light and away from gravity um, and it will spoil the original design that you were trying to create. Now I have um, in the workroom at the moment these wonderful spring Forsythia, fabulous yellow colour, nice bright and zingy and if you've seen the design on the parallel arrangement that I created you'll see that I've used the top section in that parallel design. Uh, these stems were ginormous when I had them in, they were at least 1.2 meters and this is the bottom section. And what I'll do is create some more height alongside that Molly chair. And even though I did say, I'm thinking this might be asymmetric, now maybe I'm wondering, is it going to be more balanced? by the time it's finished. So who knows, it's one of those designs that's going to evolve a little bit as I go along, which is fine, that is flower arranging. It doesn't always go the way you planned. And again, what I've done, just to almost repeat and mirror the shape of the Molly Chala, I've just done some vertical placements on the opposite side. And we've got these two very contrasting colors, very different in their shape and their texture working really well alongside one another. Um, now you can see at the back I've still got quite a lot of floral foam there to cover but we'll work on that as we move along and I'm trying to keep the design so there's a background behind me so that um, it's easier for you to see on camera. 
Now I have wonderful yellow blooms, aren't they fantastic? Now traditionally the bloom would be an autumn flower, so the chrysanthemum bloom, but now through the florist wholesalers, these are available all year round and they come in a whole host of colours. Um, this one being a lovely medium sort of size yellow, you do get much bigger sizes than this and some that are slightly smaller. And I've just removed the majority of the foliage there because the foliage tends to be quite scruffy and will detract away from these gorgeous blooms. And I've got five, I'm not quite sure if we're going to use them all, but we'll see how we go. So with the chrysanthemum blooms, what I'm going to do is almost work my way down with a focal line down towards the front. And I'm a little bit long at the moment, but we'll make that shorter as we come down towards the front. And then what you're encouraging your eye to do is to move down the design towards the base. So you're making movement and rhythm throughout the flower arrangement, which makes it more pleasing to the eye. Now we'll go with one more for a moment. I might go for five, but we'll try three and see how we get on with those three. See what it's going to look like. Okay, now as I come down towards the bottom, I'm now bringing one slightly forward so we have a profile there at the front. So the design doesn't become very flat and um, the, straight away now my eye has that solid line moving back and forth as it comes down towards the front. Now my next choice is going to be putting some foliage around the bottom and I have these wonderful rapist palms which you might have seen me use before. It's a lovely fan shaped palm. For me, it's quite probably too big to go in the design the full size it is now. So what I'm going to do with this one is just trim it in half possibly to get me a more manageable size and something that's far more in scale with this arrangement that I'm doing. And then these will give me my side placements. And I'm angling them upwards rather than flat as a horizontal place, just really so it gives it more interest and prevents the design being too wide. So we'll just spin that round so you can see how that's coming together. We've still got quite a lot of floral foam to cover, but we have an interesting backdrop and um, size to the design on one, one side. I'm going to do the same then with another one and bring it more towards the back this time so it's framing off the back part of our arrangement. Now you could continue in that style all the way round with the rapist palms all the way round but I have some wonderful, this is Plaspi or Lepidium, quite often referred to as green bells and I like the way this is draping forward and giving me a real contrast between those solid leaves that are on one side. So what I'm hoping to achieve with these is that asymmetrical effect that I discussed at the very beginning. And we're gonna bring a larger side, larger length on one side to create that asymmetry. And that will give me a lovely bit of movement down over the front of the container. Now this of course is a front facing design, so it's going to be, when it's finished, going to be seen from one direction and it could be placed up against a wall or on a sideboard. It would be great in a reception maybe of a hotel, doctor's waiting room, hairdresser, something like that if you're a commercial florist. It's quite narrow and will be quite contained within the space. And then you can see I've got that lovely sweeper movement over onto one side. Now then, just a little bit of filler material first of all with some foliage and this one I've used before in the uh, tutorials. This is, oh now my mind's gone blank, what is this? It's a lovely green foliage, whatever it is. And it's going to come back to me in a minute, oh it's called pistache. There we are, see even us um, seasoned florists forget what we're working with. This one is called pistache. Um, it's a Mediterranean 
foliage often comes in from Italy and if you holiday oh, well, how nice it would be to holiday at the moment but if you travel a lot in Greece it's um, a shrub that you'll see quite often on the side of the road or dividing borders of gardens and will have a red berry on it in late summer and in the autumn and uh, very widely used by florists as a good filler material for hand tides or large arrangements and can easily be cut down to use in a design like this. So even though my memory failed me, it's called pistache. There we are. So still quite a lot of floral foam there to cover. But that design has come in together quite nicely. So let's see what we need to do. Now I've got this extra piece of Forsythia. So we'll use that on my left hand side as well just to bring a little bit more of that yellow colour and not to waste that small piece that I had left. And what I think I'm going to do is just bring some of the Forsythia onto this side so that we've got a lovely link from one side to the other. I've got this large piece available and it would be a shame not to use it. Now this of course is a commercially available Forsythia. It's um, very, very thick. It was an extremely tall branch when it came into the shop. Um, if you've got it in the garden, it's possibly going to be more manageable and smaller and easier to control within your arrangement. Um, but it's a wonderful spring flower. Get this lovely star-shaped yellow flower on it, very vibrant, before you have any foliage. So if you're starting flower arranging and you're starting on your floral journey, this would be a really good one for you to have in your garden. Okay, so straight away we've got a lovely colour link from one side to the other. And then again I've got a colour link between the green and the class B coming over onto one side. We'll use up this wrappers palm that I've got here now. Now chopping this down doesn't do the leaf any damage. Um, they last forever and a day. They're really robust. You can plait them and weave, uh, staple them, roll and staple them. Right, okay, so how will we come in together? I think that's looking quite good. We're going to need a bit more foliage in a moment. And the other material that I chose is the September flower or the aster. So commonly called September flower because its true season is September. And what I'm going to do with this is bring it just to the side there of the Forsythia. So we're introducing another texture and another colour and creating almost a country feel to the design. Okay, and then I'll do the same on the opposite side. I'm going to bring some more of the September flower from this section here over onto the opposite side of the arrangement. And then we look at covering the floral foam because I think that's enough flower material to go in. Now this style of arranging is one of my favourites. It's quite a minimalist style. Good for um, small quantities of flowers and good for small spaces. So if you don't have a huge area to fill, this is a lovely design. And you can pick up just a simple bunch of flowers from your local florist or your local supermarket and use a bunch of simple carnations or gerbras to create the same type of effect. A couple more, I think. And then we look at filling in the gaps. There we are. So not quite as asymmetrical as I imagined it was going to be when I thought about creating this design, but you can see how that lovely cascading movement on one side really emphasises the forward movement of the design. So what we'll do now is just fill in and then we're almost done. So each week 
that I create a design, I try to describe and explain to you how the principles and elements have been used. And if we think about this design and the, the elements of flower arranging, we have space. So within our flower arrangement, there is negative space, that, so there are gaps in between the flowers. It's not overfilled and overstuffed, so you don't appreciate all the individual types of flowers that are in the design. Um, now what I'm working on at the moment is just trying to hide where my floral tape is holding my container on underneath here as well. So if possible, we need to hide that as much as we can. So then of course, if we think about texture, I've got different types of texture in the design. We've got soft, floaty textures with the flaspy. Then we have a more robust, glossy texture there with the wrapper's palm at the back. So we have contrast there between the two materials. Then we have colour. In my case, we have the yellow, the green and the white, which doesn't category, uh, sorry, doesn't fall under any category within the colour wheel, but it's quite a pleasing spring citrusy colour combination. Um, then we have the lime, so if we look at lime, which is not always referred to in flower arranging, but it's used a great deal in floristry, we have a vertical lime created by the Forsythia and the Molicella there, which makes our eye travel up and down, and we have a focal line here created by the larger blooms, which again lead your eye down to the base of the arrangement. And then of course we have shape and form, so we have different shapes. We have tall rounds, smaller rounds, and if we think about the whole design together, we get a three-dimensional form. So we go from the individual shapes to create an, an overall design which gives us three dimension and that three dimension is created by having depth to our arrangement and our flowers at different levels and angled in different positions. We have a dominant section which would be our focal point here and um, we have rhythm and repetition in that we have rhythm with colour so our colour is repeated and makes your eye travel from one side to the other we have a repetition of shapes, our rounds and our tall spike flowers. And what is there I haven't discussed, we have scale. So the flowers are all within scale of one another. They don't, there isn't one particular flower that's overpowering and there isn't any small flowers that are lost and disappear. And then I have small shaped, small sized flowers they get bigger and bigger and bigger until we get to our main focal flower here. And then harmony, now I don't think I've mentioned all of the principles and elements of design, but harmony is the overall oneness of a design and how it works, how all those elements and principles of design come together and work to create a wonderful design. And for me, there's nothing within that design that is really jarring or really um, out of style with my container or my choice of flowers. So I'm hoping that that gives you a little bit more of an understanding of principles and elements of design and how they work. And I'm hoping you've enjoyed that almost vertical style flower arrangement in that beautiful green vase. So I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel Please ask any questions in the comment box below. Let your friends know that there's some interesting videos to watch and hopefully we'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now.